Okay, so good morning, every, or good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're just going to take a second here to introduce ourselves and just introduce the talk in general. Uh, so uh, what we're here, hopefully everyone is here for the when one cloud is not enough, an overview of sites, regions, edges, distributed clouds, and more. So sorry about the long title, but uh, there's a lot of different terminology and a lot of different words that people use to, to sometimes describe the same thing. So that's sort of how we ended up with this this title, but I guess the main point is that uh, if you're deploying more than one cloud, you have a lot of decisions to make, and, and what are those decisions, and how do you make them? And you know, personally, uh, when I go back to uh, my home in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, I've got some some thinking to do about how to do tens, or even forty or fifty clouds for a sa the same organization. So that's uh, that's what we're here to do today: is just give you an overview of that information. Uh, so my name is Curtis Colquitt. Uh, I'm an OpenStack architect, uh, so to speak. <laughs> I am uh, working on a working group within the OpenStack community called the OpenStack Operators Telecom NFE Working Group. And uh, we're working to help people like myself do their day-to-day -day work, which is not a telecom operator, but an OpenStack operator. So you don't get too confused with those terminologies either. But, uh, and I work at a company called Interdynamics, which is out of Edmonton in Canada. So, Troy. Uh, hello. Um, I'm Choi Huan. Um, I'm the current uh, PTR of uh, OpenStack uh, TriCircle project. And I'm also the PTR of uh, OpenFB multi-site project. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Adrian Lebo. I am the chair of the new uh, massively distributed cloud working group that deal with the fog and the hedge computing challenges. And I'm also the chair of the Discovery Initiative, which is an open science initiative that try to revise OpenStack uh, in order to make it for an edge computing compliant. So uh, as Curtis uh, uh, introduced uh, previously, uh, the goal of our meeting actually is to uh, try to uh, clarify, uh, let's say, major pieces of the open uh, stack ecosystem when we talk about uh, uh, multiple location clouds. So actually, that, that's uh, concern and challenges we are sharing with the uh, uh, NFA working group and the Fog and Edge Massively Distributed Working Group. So we have this common interest about this multi-site, uh, multi-location deployment. So the goal of the talk is to give an overview of, uh, if possible, an exhaustive one of whole solution and whole building blocks that are available in the OpenStack ecosystem in order to operate such a multi-site deployment. And then we will make a focus on the, uh, the Open NFA side I will uh, uh, give a short overview of uh, what we are doing right now in the Fog Edge Massively Distributed Cloud Working Group. And finally, Curtis uh, will conclude this talk by giving the takeaway message. So when we start to make this presentation, we try to identify some keywords, let's say, that have some links with this notion of having several clouds uh, with the goal of operating them through a single open stack. So we put some word we have in mind, and actually, uh, even during this morning, I heard new word that I can put on that slide. And this morning, we have a, a great talk about eBay folks uh, that were uh, presenting uh, the Mess Master solution. Uh, we have also this talk about Verizon. So that means that actually, we can continue to complete these slides with new words. And the goal of our talk is to try to clarify and to make this simple. So to this M, we propose to uh, use as a red thread three use cases. A simple one, where actually you want to provide VCPE solution for the NFV world. Then uh, uh, some use case around the, the uh, uh, fog and edge infrastructure. And finally, what we call the cloud federation, which is something that is quite useful for the academics. So the goal of our presentation is to give and to identify what are the building blocks that can cover these different use cases. So, mostly the idea is to check how you should deploy the main OpenStack components through the different locations in order to be able to orchestrate, operate, supervise, and use such uh, distributed clouds. So that's uh, uh, the uh, hold vision of the OpenStack when you want to present the architecture of the OpenStack. What you should consider is that actually it's not just five components that should be distributed across different locations, but actually it's a set 
of mechanisms. It's a set of demon process databases that you should deploy across the different location in order to be able to operate your clothes. And the goal, once again, of our talk is to try to uh, give you some premise, some hints about what you can do. So as I mentioned, there is a, a different solution to cover these three use cases. Uh, we uh, decided to uh, divide in two classes. The first one has the one that are only OpenStack based. And the second one is uh, other solution that you can find, for example, on the open uh, NFV side. So we are going to start from a, a simple and naive solution where actually you put all the control plane in one site and you only deploy remotely compute nodes and these compute nodes can run VMs, containers, or bare metals. And then we are going to start to increase the complexity by introducing the different building blocks. To uh, facilitate uh, the, the, the discussion, we just define here, uh, let's say, key elements that we are going to use during our speech. So uh, as I guess, everyone is familiar with the DC. So a DC for us is one facility that delivers either compute storage or network resources in one location. This DC can be micro, nano, which means it's a few couple of servers, or it can be mega DC, where you can find actually thousands of servers. When you want to deploy this DC across different uh, geographical locations, obviously you have wide uh, connection, so wide area network connection. As I mentioned, uh, you can uh, have a fog or edge computing infrastructure. And to uh, facilitate the architecture of OpenStack, we are not going to dive in two details, and we are uh, uh, going just to uh, uh, identify all services that are necessary to run an OpenStack infrastructure through the name services. So this includes Nova, Neutron, and so on. And we are just going to make a distinction with Keystone. So as I mentioned, the, the first uh, uh, way to operate uh, uh, a multi-site location deployment is to keep all the control pane in one center, one centralized center, and to only uh, uh, deploy remotely the compute node. So this use case, for example, covers the VCP use case for the NFV uh, world. And the idea is to check how you can orchestrate such an infrastructure. So it's quite simple. You deploy OpenStack as you are used to deploy in one location. And actually, we'll have the RabbitMQ, for example, that will be across all locations. And you can, uh, uh, if you want, you can segregate this infrastructure by using uh, the availability zone and the host aggregate. So once again, in the first DC, in the master DC, you will find Keystone services. All services that are uh, uh, usual, Neutron, Nova, and so on, and the API. And on the remote side, you will find only the compute nodes. So this uh, uh, scenario, this deployment is quite simple. This is the, us the usual one. And obviously, uh, it has a lot of cons. So for example, what about the network? What about the impact of the latency? What happens when my compute node talks with my remote services and reciprocally? What are the bandwidth constraints? What about Neutron? Do you need to deploy a uh, DVR? What about Cinder? What happens if I want to uh, attach a remote volume? So what does it mean? It means that all my traffic will go through the wide area network links. What about the high availability? What about the security management? So you have a lot of cons. And maybe the first one is about the scalability. So the idea will be to check how you can segregate your cloud in order to uh, deal with the scalability issue. So Curtis. Okay, thanks, Adrian. Um, before I get too far into this, I just wanted to say uh, thanks, everybody, for coming, and also that um, uh, it's a pleasure to work with, with Adrian and, and Joe and Chao Yi um, and, and work with people from around the world, uh, from China and France, and it's, it's a real pleasure to be able to do this, and I think that's a big strength of the OpenStack community. Uh, so another thing I wanted to point out is that we're not necessarily pointing, uh, prescribing any solutions today. We're just giving you an overview of all the potential pieces, the things that you could do if you wanted to, to deploy more than one cloud, which is what I would imagine most of the people in this room will end up doing in some fashion. 
Um, I also want to mention that some of the diagrams are very simplistic, at least my diagrams are, because we, in some cases we tried to keep them as simple as possible, so they're not necessarily representative of what you would do in like a real you know, uh, production deployment, but they're, they're just sort of abstractions that you can, you can take a look at. Um, and then another point that I wanted to make is that you know, OpenStack, we want to do a lot of different things with OpenStack. We want, to, we want to be able to deploy very small clouds, and we also want to be able to manage very large clouds. So there's, there's a lot of work to do if we're going to deploy a couple hypervisors in 10,000 places versus 10,000 hypervisors in one place. Those are pretty different use cases, but we're trying to support them all. Uh, so Nova Cells is a, a method of segregation that we're sort of, that's the term that we're using in this discussion anyways, is a way to break down the, um, some of the failure domains and also make it more scalable at the same time. So Nova has had this concept of cells for uh, quite a while um, and has recently, uh, the version two has been created and that is actually gonna be the default for every OpenStack deployment in Okada and above. Uh, so what this does is essentially allows you to move uh, the Nova database out of the centralized API. So you can have a centralized Nova API database and then you can create a cell that's made up of a, a, a smaller number of compute nodes and you can move that database into that same cell and you can do the same thing with the messaging queue and that's gonna allow you to, to reduce the size of the failure domain. It's gonna allow you to make it more scalable um, and it also adds a couple of additional features like you know, an optional, you can make it into a grouping mechanism. Uh, you can, it's also helpful for when you're deploying uh, more hypervisors, you can add a, add a cell and test it out and then once you're completely sure it works, you can bring that into the entire system. Uh, so this is an example sort of of what services would be running in a particular queue or a particular cell. So in these diagrams, I use a little smiley face as like the end user, but uh, in this example, we just have the one endpoint, but we can have multiple cells. And in those cells, we just have the message queue, the actual Nova computes and conductors, and then the Nova DB, and then the actual hypervisors would be there as well. Um, so that this sort of gives you an idea of what services are running where. So as I mentioned, uh, there's some pros and cons with this. Uh, so we can reduce the size of failure domains. We can, it help, it's helpful to scale Nova. And then when w used with other tools that are becoming more available in OpenStack, it becomes a very powerful um, piece of technology. Uh, however, it's also kind of new, uh, at least V2. So I'm just talking about V2 in this situation, but it's being worked on a lot. And because it's default, it's gonna get a lot of use, right? And that was sort of one of the problems that uh, the developers had mentioned previously with version one is that not everybody had used it. So I think in a lot of, one of the things we're gonna find out in, in this presentation a little bit is that we want to be able to use the same code paths and configuration that everybody else uses. Or the, the more you stick to the mainline kind of stuff, the more able you are to upgrade and, and, and maintain your systems over time. So it's, it's great that Cells v2 is coming out and it's, it's gonna be default so that we all use it and it's just a great example of how to segregate and um, scale and separate out important pieces. Um, and then when you use it with technologies such as uh, what I believe are called right now routed provider networks, you can really start to see how you can segregate your network, segregate your compute nodes, and it becomes very powerful. Um, and there are several large users of version one, uh, such as CERN and Nectar, among others. So as we progress through the presentation, we sort of, we keep, we're gonna go through different technologies and, and methodologies. So we talked about, um, you know, a baseline deployment where you have uh, centralized everything and you're willing to put compute nodes and other pieces in different, across the WAN. Then we talked about cells and now we're gonna talk about regions, which is sort of where my background is because uh, previously I worked to uh, deploy a public cloud in Canada and regions made a lot of sense for me at the time because with a public cloud, you might only have one or two or maybe three regions. And uh, that makes a lot of sense when you're doing a, a public cloud uh, when, you, when that's the kind of numbers of regions that you're looking for. 
Um, so generally speaking, what you do is you're going to share the Keystone database. You can do a couple of other of the pieces of, of OpenStack, like Glance and Horizon, but generally speaking, it's, it's Keystone. And what you do is you share that across each of your regions, usually having some sort of um, private, uh, secure, uh, wide area network. Uh, but there's some limitations with that as is basically it just allows you to do authentication and authorization, but it doesn't generally allow you to do quotas and SSH keys and images and, and all these extra pieces of functionality that you need in order to run uh, two or three regions, let alone, you know, 40 clouds. So this is uh, the start of some of the diagrams that I'm going to sort of use to discuss this. So. The first option um, is to simply just have one keystone and put that in one place. And all of the other clouds and data centers that you have are going to go over the WAN and talk right back to that centralized keystone. So this, this is a potential deployment methodology that you could use. And in this, you could do all of your um, sort of creates and updates to the central keystone, and then but only do reads in the other endpoints in the other data centers, not do updates there. And um, as I found out while we were researching for this presentation, one way to accomplish that would be to change some of the policy JSON files to in the other clouds to say, well, you're not allowed to do creates and updates there, but you can do them uh, in the centralized keystone. So this is one methodology. And also I should note that I'm not showing sort of any HA capability, you know, like you might be running three, uh, a, a cluster of MySQL Galera instances to manage this keystone, and there's all kinds of, but I'm just not showing that right now. Um, so another possibility that you could use to do this is to have, still have that primarily, primary centralized keystone, but have secondary uh, databases that are in the other two clouds, and they're asynchron asynchronously replicated to the other regions. So you still do all of your reads and writes, or all of your sort of creates and updates in the centralized region, and you can do reads in the other ones, but you have a, a secondary copy of your centralized MySQL database that's asynchronously replicated to the other regions. So this is another model, and in some cases, this might be the best model if this is the kind of thing that you want to do, because it still gives you that high availability of the Keystone database uh, in each of the regions, but you don't have sort of this la uh, brittle, maybe brittle is not the right word, but you don't have to have this shared fully synchronous cluster across the, all regions. And this was something that the multi-site team for OPNFE looked at and was, is their recommendation for deploying multiple clouds in this, in, with this particular methodology. Um, and then the one that's kind of near and dear to my heart, because this is what I would have done in a public cloud, is to have uh, a shared database cluster across all regions. And this is kind of the like historically most common deployment if you're doing a regional deployment is to have you know, a, a Keystone or a MySQL Galera cluster that is shared all the way across all of your regions and it's, it's synchronous so you can read and write to all of them. Uh, so some pros and cons. Um, so what this gets you, no, no matter which one of those ways that you deploy it, is uh, shared authentication and authorization across all these clouds. And from my standpoint, with my sort of history of doing uh, public clouds, is that it, it looks a lot like what you would expect a public cloud to look like, uh, with re different regions and different endpoints, and then that same shared authentication and authorization. But in order to do this, you have to make some decisions on your architecture. Like, do you want to do centralized? Do you want to do asynchronous? Are you going to do the sort of more commonly done synchronous method with a large Galera cluster? Um, are you going to do, th how many data centers do you have? Do you have two data centers or three data centers? Are you going to do a Galera arbitrator? You know, there's, there's some technical decisions to be made here. Um, you also have to have some kind of, or typically you have some kind of secure, private, um, wide area network that you can access these, do all these database actions over uh, in a secure manner. However, and this is where we started to get into the real problem, for, for when I was working on a public cloud, like two or three regions, that's fine. That's probably as many as we needed to do, even in a country as big as Canada. Um, but when we start to get into some of these other use cases, like telecom use cases, we're not talking about three clouds. We're talking about 10. We're talking about 40. We're talking about 100. Um, and this sharing a, 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 a Galera database across that many no 
regions just doesn't, it's just not gonna happen, right? So it might, the, the asynchronous might work in that situation, but there's, in general, it's, it's probably not the best solution for this uh, large number of clouds. Um, also, obviously, as we've talked, we, this doesn't really cover things like quotas and um, networking and images and, tip and uh, things like that. So there's, you still have to do more work on top of that. Um, and it, doing this can also make it more difficult to upgrade clouds because you have to maintain like a similar version of Keystone across all of these systems. And of course, you have the additional operational complexity of doing all this. Um, so in this example, we sort of, it, in a way it looks simpler and it kind of looks like we're going backwards, but what we're saying here is in this use case, we're gonna just have completely separate clouds. They're all individual, there's no shared Keystone, there's no really shared anything. Um, and while this looks simplistic, it's actually probably one of the more um, interesting or complicated versions because we have to think about having all these different clouds and then we're gonna probably put some sort of layer of abstraction on top of them, some sort of cloud management system. And um, so th th there's a lot of interesting work that could go into this. And, and we might have time to talk a bit more about that particular use case. Um, also, what uh, I wanted to talk about is, also, is OpenStack Federation, which is another technology that can be used for identity, for authentication and authorization. Um, it was kind of mentioned by Adrian at the beginning there, where this is a, a, a kind of a common desire for usually um, nonprofit or academic organizations who have a cloud and they want to be able to use somebody else's cloud or share their resources. They want to be able to share resources across different clouds. Um, and what it does is it essentially allows you to establish some kind of trust with another cloud. So you could say, well, I'll, I have users in my cloud and we're going to, another cloud is going to trust those users to, to use resources in their cloud. Um, so like the, the canonical example of this is, say we had a Canadian OpenStack cloud and a European OpenStack cloud, and they wanted to share resources and allow users in one cloud to access resources in another and, and so forth. So federation is, is, is how you would typically do that. Um, so in this example, users of the Canadian OpenStack cloud would be able to access resources in the European cloud. And in this example, they would be using what they were calling Keystone to Keystone federation. Uh, and what I like about federation is that it, it seems to me like a very good way that you could do some sort of centralized identity, right? So in this example, we're talking about multiple organizations, but even with one organization, you could use federation as a centralized identity system. Uh, so the pros with this are that you get shared authentication without the need for doing the shared um, keystone, uh, we don't have to synchronize everything. Uh, and some of the cons are that it's, it, you have to understand it. it. There's some complex configurations. There's a lot of work that you're gonna have to do to get a good understanding of how it works and how to map users to groups and, and things like that. Um, and there may be some additional work that you have to do in terms of cleaning up resources. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague. Uh, hello, I will talk about uh, a typical OpenStack uh, multi-region deployment. Uh, we have built one environment in OpenFV uh, for a multi-site cloud. Uh, in this multi-site cloud, uh, um, we use shared Keystone to serve for uh, three OpenStack cloud. Uh, the shared Keystone is installed in region one and uh, um, we also have another uh, region, uh, the central neutron and the tricycle uh, is running in a virtual machine uh, provisioned in region one. And the uh, uh, neutron and the tricycle, the central neutron and the tricycle uh, is a central region in the multi-region cloud. Um, in this uh, environment, we also uh, provide the cross uh, version compatibility. Um, we use Newton version OpenStack Cloud, but for 
uh, central neutron and uh, tricycle, we use the PAC version. Uh, it's the latest uh, coil. Um, this environment uh, is to um, support the VNF, the telecom application, uh, to realize cloud level high availability. Um, two application um, planned to deploy in this uh, multi region cloud. One application is called uh, uh, VMS. VMS is to provide uh, VOIP service. Um, another application is uh, video conference. Uh, this demo uh, will be shown uh, in OPNFE Beijing Summit uh, in June. And then now uh, we are doing the application onboarding. Um, to realize the cloud level high availability, the VMS will be deployed into uh, three regions. Uh, the non-HA components of the VMS will be deployed in region one. And in region two and region three, um, the VMS uh, high availability component uh, will be in deployed in these two regions. If one region clashed or one region is in planned downtime or unplanned downtime, then the VMS in another region can still provide the service to the end user. This is to uh, pro support uh, application cloud level high availability. That means even one cloud is not so uh, high availability, or uh, one cloud uh, only can provide a three line, but uh, from the application level, the application can still build uh, five nine services. Um, to realize the cloud level high availability, um, there is one requirement uh, to provide the networking between the uh, HA components. So uh, the, the data uh, in the HA components will be shared in different regions. So the networking for the east-west traffic is needed for the application. And at the same time, um, the application will provide the service um, in each region uh, respectively. That means uh, in each region, um, the OpenStack needs to provide the floating IP service to the application. That, means, that also means the north source traffic will be handled in uh, OpenStack separately. Uh, to finish the uh, networking topology, Tricycle will help uh, this to be uh, done. Uh, Tricycle um, has two parts. One is local plug-in, installed in local neutron. For example, in region one, region two, region three, we will install local plug-in. And uh, in the central neutron server, we will install the uh, central plug-in. So, when you create the networking topology, you can create the topology in the central neutron server in the step one. And the line, you can put the virtual machine in Nova uh, in different OpenStack region to use the network provision in the central neutron. And the, the Nova will talk to local neutron. And the local neutron plug in, we intercept the request and talk to the central neutron. Central neutron with the tricycle central plug in, we coordinate the multiple OpenStack neutron service to establish the network between different OpenStack clouds. Um, there are four basic uh, networking elements in Tricycle. One is the local network. Local network means uh, the network can only be in one OpenStack cloud. 
And uh, uh, local router also only work in one open stack cloud. For local network, uh, it supports uh, uh, VLAN, VXLAN, and uh, flat network. So when you create a, a network or router in the central neutral server, if you specify the region name in the availability zone hint, then you will create one local network or local router. Uh, except the uh, local network and the uh, local router, uh, Tricycle provides the magic uh, networking uh, element, class OpenStack L2 network. Uh, a class OpenStack L2 network means uh, the network can be structured into multiple OpenStack uh, cloud. Um, the, the class OpenStack L2 network can, can also be a flat network or VLAN or VXLAN. Line for the uh, non-local router. Non-local router is one logical router. This logical router will be distributed into multiple OpenStack cloud. And uh, this distributed uh, router will be interconnected with one cross OpenStack L2 network. We call this uh, cross OpenStack L2 network as the bridge network. So uh, this logical router will be consisted of multiple uh, router and uh, bridge network. Uh, when you uh, create a network or router, if you specify more than one region name or availability zone name or no uh, parameter was specified LAN, a cross OpenStack L2 network or non-local router will be created. So let's look at uh, look back. What, what, what's the networking element used in the VMS network? Uh, for the bridge network, uh, it's cross open stack L2 network. And uh, for R4, one, two, three, uh, they are consisted uh, as one non-local router. This non-local router is for the east-west traffic. And the uh, network. Uh, uh, net1, net2, net3 are local network. Uh, this network will be used for the instance to, to be attached. And uh, for router, R1, R2, R3, they are uh, local router. Uh, in, even for the external network, 1, 2, 3, they are also a local network. Uh, so this uh, top, topology, um, automated by tricycle, uh, east-west traffic uh, between OpenStack cloud and uh, uh, north-south traffic uh, in each OpenStack cloud could, uh, could be supported. Uh, except uh, the network uh, we just mentioned uh, uh, in the last page, uh, um, cross OpenStack uh, L2 network can also be attached with instance directly and the non-local router could be attached with external network so that to uh, organize one tenant's network so centralize the uh, uh, traffic pass. Uh, we have one onboarding session tomorrow afternoon. If you are interested in this project, uh, please join us. Uh, for Another project uh, to deal with uh, uh, multi-region issue is uh, Kimboard. Uh, Kimboard is mainly to provide uh, uh, multi-region uh, resource synchronization, like uh, uh, SSH key or uh, flavor or volume time. And uh, uh, it also uh, provides a function to uh, manage multi-region uh, quota for one tenant. Uh, this project uh, uh, has been a part of uh, OPMV multi-site, but now uh, it's moving out from the multi-site project. Uh, okay, so next will be folk edge. Thank you. Yes. So thanks. So uh, I'm not going to dive into uh, too many details, especially because uh, I hope we'll have uh, a couple of few seconds to ask questions at the end. Uh, so the takeaway message on that slide is that within the distributed, uh, within the massively distributed cloud working group, we are not addressing the federation question. We are already investigating how OpenStack 
can orchestrate natively fog, edge, and massively distributed clouds and infrastructures. So if you are interested to have much more details about the vision of the working group, please join us tomorrow afternoon. There is the BOF session that has been announced this morning by Jonathan. I will give you a lot of details about what we are doing in this uh, working group. So the, the current action we are uh, 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 focusing right now is that the exercise we try to do today during this session is to identify whole piece of components that can be suited to operate massively distributed clouds. What we are doing right now is that we are implementing a performance analysis tools to uh, get results. So for example, when you deploy regions, what will be the performance you can expect? If you choose cells, what will be the performance? If you choose federation, what will be the performance? So that's another session we are going to present on the uh, Wednesday afternoon, and obviously I encourage you uh, to join us, and I will be pleased to give you more details. So I think it's time to conclude. So please. Okay, so we just have a couple seconds to conclude here. Um, we've discussed quite a few different solutions. Uh, there's a lot of rich, complex authentication options. Um, some of the components of OpenStack have really great segregation methods, and that's something that I'd like to personally see in some of the other uh, projects within OpenStack is an ability to segregate, uh, do cell-like things in other projects. Um, regions, which are sort of my historical method of using multiple clouds, uh, probably don't work in deployments where you have 10, 20, 100, or even 3,000 deployments. Um, there's, there's some work that's being done around that. Um, I, I do think that uh, centralized identity using federation might be a, a more powerful tool than we currently realize. Um, as Adrian was talking about, distributed clouds is a very important use case. Um, we also know that we can't always have a full HA control plane in every deployment. Uh, that just, we just can't do it like that. If you have, have 10,000 locations that you need to put hypervisors in and you want to do with OpenStack, well, you know, how do you do that? It, it, we're going to need to do some sort of distributed methodology. Um, and then we talked briefly, uh, we don't really have enough time, but uh, about multiple clouds, multiple separate, completely separate clouds. Well, what do you manage that with? In the NFE world, in the, the Etsy NFE world, they've defined this management and orchestration layer called Mano. You know, like, is that what's going to do all of this work or something like it? And is that, as an OpenStack community, something that we're interested in or would we like to see a different solution? Um, and then, as you can see, there's a, the op oops, is that not going forward? Um, but uh, yeah, if we have any, I think that's it for our presentation. So if we have uh, a minute, maybe for a couple questions, it'd be great to hear something. Hi, thank you for the presentation. It's really good. So what I saw is in my experience too, the, the biggest challenge is the network blueprint design for deploying multi-site deployment and getting them together. What we saw our friends uh, design is three networks. One is the XNet for north, north, northbound to southbound, one on the bottom, east-west, and one on the middle, mainly for intra-region intra for the multi -tenant, net, net, tenant workloads, right? So in that sense, most of the service providers, at least the telco, will not likely like the idea of expanding one layer to broadcast domains across multiple geographical regions. Okay, this is this is this is a hurdle. If that's the case, did you ever consider using only layer three, as in the case of Calico, to implement communication between multi multi sites, even for east west traffic? Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, for uh, layer two network. Uh, it's not uh, necessary to be um, uh, used uh, in uh, inter-cloud uh, 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 networking. Uh, even for VMS, uh, in fact, uh, um, it's a slow uh, layer three networking. The layer two network uh, is only work for the uh, um, bridge network. It's only for the bridge network. Yeah, and uh, in the future, uh, for the bridge network, uh, it could be um, 
built by other technology like uh, uh, use VPN or uh, I think uh, it's uh, pluggable for the um, how to interconnect uh, different uh, router. Okay, well, uh, currently, VX9 is only one of the options to bridge the Lotus in different uh, OpenStack cloud. Okay, and I think we're out of time. Uh, thank you very much. If you, have, if you saw something wrong in the presentation, come talk to us. Let us know if you have questions, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.